sound of footsteps in the dark. To voices that may not be quite human. To the sound of screams in the night. To the haunted cabaret. The home of all things horror. On Rhode Island Free Radio.org. With your host, George Garner. The haunted cabaret starts now. old cowboy went riding out one dark and windy day Up on a ridge he rested as he went along his way When all at once a mighty herd of red-eyed cows he saw Plowing through the ragged skies And up a cloudy draw Their brands were still on fire and their hooves were made of steel Their horns were black and shiny and their hot breath he could feel A bolt of fear went through him as they thundered through the sky For he saw the riders coming hard And he heard their mournful cry Their eyes were blurred, their shirts all soaked with sweat He's riding hard to catch that herd, but he ain't caught them yet Cause they've got to ride forever on that range up in the sky All the horses snorting fire As they ride on, hear their cry Riders floated on by him, he heard one call his name If you want to save your soul from hell riding on our range Then cowboy, change your ways, they are with us, you will ride Trying to catch the devil's herd Across these endless skies Yippee, I was Johnny Cash, Ghost Riders in the Sky, to kick off this week's episode of The Haunted Cabaret here on Rhode Island Free Radio. I'm your host, as always, George Garner. Uh, no Chuckles the Clown tonight, um, but I'm joined by my producer. Well, I have to be joined by my producer. Technology is a mystery to me in this department. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Tony, where is the evil Chuckles the Clown? Well, If you can believe it, uh, Chuckles the Clown sounds a lot like me these days in that for the month of October, he will be working three, count them, three jobs. Okay. Now, does that just mean he's the evil clown at three different uh, Halloween attractions? (laughs) I think he, yeah, he has, you know, the job that pays the bills. Right. And he has his, his yearly appearances at Scary Acres. And then he has another job that he's also doing right now. Uh, that's you know that's horror related. So it's still horror related, but it's still work. So I don't know where that balance is off at. Yeah, and I think the biggest element of horror in his life is uh, the demon seed that he has spawned. <laughs> 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 kind of reminds me of uh, that movie, The Godsend, 
uh, you know, whose tagline or promotional line was, for God's sake, take it back. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, and I think we talked about it on the air with Chuckles is that it's not an 18-year sentence anymore. Kids stay at home until they're 25, 30, 35. Forever. 40. <laughs> forever. <laughs> and I have, a, I have a member of my family who literally it's forever. Because you can stay on your parents' health insurance till 27, right? So you're going to... You're looking at at least 27 years, and they're probably going to kick around for a few more years as they seek gainful employ. So, well, and something tells me that when they start to approach that 27, they're going to get a very permissive uh, Obama-like <laughs> president to kick it up to maybe 47. <laughs> I mean, because there's going to come a point where you basically can't go anywhere. I mean, you're not going to be able to get a job. You know, speaking of all things horror, you know, search for a job. Yeah, S- search for a job that pays more than minimum wage. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't. And speaking of all things horror, I guess there's only really one subject to lead off with. I mean, I can't think of anything more horrible than the uh, debate. It's the tonight, right? The it's deb- the the alleged debate is tonight. Yes, right. I'll tell you, I you know since Godzilla versus King Kong, I mean that was the last time I think we had so much hot air and so much chest beating <laughs> in one venue. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's yeah, it's not a it's not a debate. It's more of well. A, it's as much a, of a debate as the Jerry Springer show is, you know, uh, engaging talk to change people's lives, and as much as a heavyweight match booked by Vince McMahon is a Greco-Roman style wrestling match. You are some kind of psychological intervention. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah, kind of. I don't know, what would you say? Actually, I would probably, in professional wrestling terms, think back to ECW for this one. <laughs> Maybe, um, what, New Jack versus Beulah? Maybe? Although Beulah are being a lot more attractive. Well, you know, and I've mentioned it on the show before, when I was a really young guy, I really thought the Ramones were brothers. Right. And uh, I think there's people out there that really think that there's going to be a debate taking place tonight. I am in. You know what? I'll own right up here because I do like horror movies, as you know. You know if you listen to this show, I own up right here. I'm going to watch it. I mean, it's it's got a sick fascination to me. You know, kind of like um, an Ed Wood film, or you know, kind of like um, one of those Herschel Gordon Lewis, you know, seventies gore fests or nudie monster movies. <laughs> it's. I don't. I, I'm just curious. Yeah, it's like it's rubbernecking. You know, you drive down 95 and you want to, you know, all the traffic's all way backed up. You can't really figure out why. And it's because everybody's trying to gawk over there to see if they can see a dead body sticking out. Yeah. And what's even worse is that I'm, you know, driving to the show tonight and I'm actually wondering, I'm, I'm, I catch, I'm actually pondering what the strategy is going to be for these two idiots. I think it's not, not go off the rails. It, this right. is and about a, doing the minimum to get by, to put an hour debate under everybody's belts and move on. Right. In other words, neither one wants to say anything terminal. Right. Right. If they can do that, then they have succeeded. Trump doesn't want to blow a gasket and Hillary doesn't want to pass out or have to excuse herself to the bathroom or start coughing or you right. know anything that's going to point towards any health problems. She's oh, so, going to try to stay away from that. I don't know. So do you think the Trump campaign right now is mobilizing the sneezing powder <laughs> or the... Uh... <laughs> They're going to rub the uh, itching powder you could get in the back of Mad Magazine when you were a kid all over her podium. <laughs> look at her. Look at her. She's sick. <laughs> I, I wouldn't put it past any of them. All right. Let's go. Um, all right. Let's, let's, we'll dedicate it, this one to Hillary. Uh, let's go back to the music. Uh, <laughs> Black Sabbath, Lady (laughs) Evil, here on the Haunted Cabaret on Rhode Island Free Radio. Where they say the wind alone 
right, that was Lady Evil, dedicated to Hillary Clinton on this, you know, auspicious night of hers. And I guess, you know, part of the fascination is to see whether this woman is actually Hillary Clinton, you know, or some kind of mechanical construct. And if she is human, whether she can stand up there for an hour and a half listening to Donald Trump. I don't know if anybody can listen to Donald Trump for an hour and a half, but, the, you know, the question is, is, is she going to have to change her colostomy bag? Is she going to have to use the bathroom? Is she going to have to... Uh, Are they going to feed some electric, you know, some new electric current through her leg? <laughs> um, I don't know, that's my theory, is that she's kind of, you know, like half automaton, you know, maybe, you know, like they... You know, run the juice through Frankenstein's monster, <laughs> you know, to revive him every now and then and give him a little jolt. Yeah. Now, did you hear that? And it's turned out not to be the case that Donald Trump in it had invited uh, one of Bill Clinton's mistresses, Jennifer Flowers, who I don't want to stare at under any circumstances. No, Donald Bill, Trump had invited Bill, her. I'll to tell you, Bill Monroe. Clinton was the worst choice judge of mistresses. Oh, <laughs> gruesome, gruesome. All right, but you said, thought it'd say he had. Donald Trump had invited Jennifer Flowers to, uh, you know, each candidate gets a certain amount of guests that get to come and sit in the front row. Right. And uh, Donald Trump was trying to get Jennifer Flowers in town to sit right in the front row in front of Hillary Clinton. Typical Trump move, really bad idea. <laughs> yeah, because then he's got to stare at Jennifer Flowers all night, too. And the, and the yeah, I mean, he's right <laughs> up there next to her. I'm, I wonder what she looks like these days. I mean, she was nothing to write home about yeah. back in Bill Clinton's day. But, no, I mean, if he was going to get anybody, he should have got Monica Lewinsky. <laughs> I mean, you know, that's the game taker right there. And Monica Lewinsky has actually improved with age. I mean, she looks better now than she did uh, in her 20s. Uh -huh. Right, which is why it would aggravate Hillary more. Actually, she even went on to be a uh, Brian uh, plus-size model for a short time. Hmm. Yeah, no, and that's why she would aggravate Hillary more. I mean, you know, Hillary Clinton is not going to be dismayed by looking at some broken down wreck of a relic that looks even worse than her. <laughs> <laughs> I got a double wide now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, no, that that's, I'm sure that Trump was talked out of that by his daughter. Yeah. Who probably should be running for office instead of him. Yeah. I mean, really. I don't know. I mean, she seems to be the source of most of his good ideas. Um, he's the source of most of his bad ideas. <laughs> um I don't know. It's like I say. It's it's basically a like you said, car accident. You know, car accident that we're all going to slow down yep. to take a look we're at. We're all going to gawk at it. But yep. listen, in this very medium that we're in right now, car accidents have made made kings. Look at Don Ama, Don Imus. Look at Howard Stern. I mean, it was proven at one point when Howard Stern was at his heyday that people that hated him actually tuned in longer than his fans because they wanted to see what stupid thing he was going to say next and they wanted to complain about it. Right. So it's a no-lose situation. Well, yeah, and Donald Trump, actually, it's probably no accident. Donald Trump is a big fan of Howard Stern. Yeah. I mean, that's, yeah, cut from the same cloth and following the same model. I know there's to some terrestrial talk stations, political talk stations I listen to in the car. And, man, I think these people are idiots. And some of the people that call in make me cringe. But guess what? I'm listening for the hour. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, no, we, we have a flip. We, we all have... A, uh, an attraction, an attraction to the freak show. <laughs> I mean, you know, whatever form that freak show may take, you know, whether it's going down here to Oakland Beach and looking at some of the people that lay out there naked, <laughs> you know, in the summer. You know, I've done that a couple of times. And you want to talk about horror. You want to see some of the things that expose. Uh, my own personal pet theory is that, and this, and I'm not a chauvinist, this goes for men and women. There should be, and again, I'm not, you know, some kind of authoritarian. I am not against the American Constitution. <laughs> but there should be an amendment to it that prohibits people over a certain age from wearing certain kind of <laughs> garments, shall we say. First and foremost, bathing suits. I mean, if you have enough varicose veins in your legs <laughs> to be able to plot a trip all the way from here to Alaska, <laughs> you know, cover them up. Men, if you have, let's, let's just say that your abdominals outdistance your pectorals <laughs> by maybe a factor of three. And your wife's pectorals. And your wife's, and yeah, your pectorals and your wife's pectorals are in a downward race. Just <laughs> keep your shirt on. I mean, yeah. you, you can go down. 
Look at the 1920s for inspiration. Yeah. Okay. Look at the 1920s. Look at their fashion uh, statements. If you're over, let's say, 50 years old, emulate them. Please. The same could be said for the gym. You know, I go to Planet Fitness, and there's always uh, the uh, 70, 80 year old Jewish guy who's sitting there reading the Providence Journal naked, spread eagle, sitting there enjoying the paper, you know, waiting to <laughs> queue up for the shower to get in the uh, sauna. Yeah, of, I mean, of just course. letting it fly. Yeah. I, yeah. I've, you know, I've been a member of a gym a couple of times. I can't use that locker Looks room. Looks like he sat in some bubble gum. <laughs> yeah. <it's> like, <laughs> no, no, no. And, and, and finally, along these lines, feet. <laughs> now, I have, I am far from a guy with a foot fetish. Okay, some people have that. that you know, that's, 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 to each fetish their own. You know, that's fine. But even though I don't have a foot fetish, I can tell the difference between a woman's foot that's reasonably attractive, just like I can tell the rest of the woman being attractive <laughs> or not. There are some feet walking around in flip-flops and sandals that would look perfectly at home on a Neanderthal woman. <laughs> Why do they feel compelled to let their feet out when they have all the attractiveness of Fred Flintstones? You know, I and I resemble that. Rem Actually, I, you know, I was having something on my foot looked at by a doctor, and I, I told him, listen, you're earning your money today because my feet are freaking disgusting. Disgusting, you know. From, okay, but at least there was a doctor from playing sports, and then from wrestling, and then from working in the shipyard. I mean, I have like toes that are facing different ways, and toes <laughs> with, without toenails, and I got big sores on the bottom of my feet. You know, it's like, yeah, I wouldn't walk around on uh, running down the beach in uh, a pair of flip flops with my funky toes facing out in all directions. No, and 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 there's got to be somebody other than Tony Jones who has that same level of good judgment and common sense. So for my sake, please, you know, I am an observer. I mean. You know, I'm a radio personality, I'm a writer, I'm a musician. All of these creative activities require a keen sense of observation. Right. I can't help it. For my sake, if you have ever loved this show or even if you hate it, just for human decency, cover up. Now, on the other side of the Freddie Flintstone feet, though, I mean, I have Freddie Flintstone feet. I wish I could bowl like Freddie Flintstone. Maybe that was part of the uh, that was part of the you know big messy feet was just just a the way he could tiptoe great down. Great bowler. Well, yeah, he yeah he he could. Uh, and Hanna Barbera even had the great sound effects to go with it. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. Did any use his uh, best favorite delivery was to tiptoe up to the line and uh, you know then release the ball with that ballet curve or something like yeah. Of course, it it usually worked. On the other hand, if Bonnie Rubble distracted him, the ball would end up in the next alley. <laughs> so it didn't always – oh, was that Wilma Flintstone? I think when she convinced him to take her bowl, bowling with him. Yeah, I think it was Wilma that knocked down the pins in the next alley. Of course, you've got to know you never take a woman bowling. Unless that's she's a, lesbian. That's a men's game. <laughs> well, that's what I say, unless the woman's lesbian <laughs> and butch. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, is bowling really – it used to be. I mean, you know, back in my grandfather's day, it used to be a men's game. Yeah. Even back in my father's day, it used to be a men's game. I'm not, sh I'm not sure if the women haven't really invaded that uh, sport and taken it over to some extent. I mean, every time I, you know, you're flipping through the channels on, you know, cables, million channels, nothing on. <laughs> you know, when you come across professional bowling, it seems to be the women. That's scary. That's almost as scary as women's golf. Yeah, what's even scarier is uh, some of those female bowlers aren't bad. <laughs> I mean, you know, some of, they usually have, you know, the best of them have builds like the uh, female roller derby right, chicks. yeah. Yeah. By the way, are we going to get hate mail from all this? Is this misogyny? Is this, um, what, are we do, what are we doing right now? Is yeah, it, uh, is it just it, chauvinism? I think we're, chauv we're chauvinists. Yeah. We're definitely chauvinists. I know that. <laughs> That's, yeah, no question about that. All right, let's go back to uh, the music for a second. Let's, uh, all right, this one, it's in, in fairness, this one's dedicated to Donald Trump, <laughs> veteran of the or, psychic wars. Or for anybody that actually makes it through the hour and a half debate. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And if you want to know what Tony means, listen to these lyrics. <laughs>
the cult veteran of the psychic wars which as tony said we will all be after tonight's debate and i think after this election season i mean i know this i'm on the front lines this time around and uh, i'm just seeing some crazy stuff out there yeah well the craziest thing and you know and by the way i hope i'm not boring anybody you know as we're talking about politics like this but i mean yeah we talk about horror this is existential horror that we are living through right now i mean really you know i know we all try to it's kind of like when we try to ignore the possibility of nuclear destruction yeah. you know like we really don't want to think about or especially parents with little kids i mean i like to think about it just for fun but you know the people in this room do but let's say you're a parent with a little kid that you don't want to see like melt down right you know and at school, they're being told, duck and cover, and you'll be just fine. <laughs> right. Well, not anymore, but now that if Trump is elected, they'll be bringing that back. Yeah. yeah. When, how long ago did they discontinue that? That was, I know it was through the 60s, right? The Cuban Missile Crisis and all that. I think it was still a little bit during the Cold War, yeah. And then uh, I, yeah, we had, the, we had uh, drills and stuff when I was a kid in the 80s and 90s, but we didn't have... Duck and cover, anything duck and like that. Cover. You mean it was what kind of drill was it in the eighties and nineties? Just you know how to get out of the building and stuff like that. Right. I mean, yeah, because I mean, 
I guess I did, but I just don't remember. You know, that's how insignificant it was. Like that, you know, I know we had fire drills. We had drills about how to jump out of the back of the bus, too. <laughs> Jumping out of the, in case of what? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I know. In case the front of the bus runs into a truck. <laughs> <laughs> Which, of course, we all know school buses don't have any seat belts. Now, if we throw a kid in any other vehicle going 60 miles an hour, we got to strap that kid down always from Sunday. But if he's in a school bus with a bunch of his pals, oh, no, no, the seat in front of him, he'll be just fine. Right. In other words, he'll crack his head open and spew great gray matter because isn't there a metal bar on the seat in front of you? <laughs> and, well, I mean, we all know it's the cool kids that sit in the back of the bus, so you're going to eliminate all your cool kids because they're going to go flying the whole length <laughs> of the bus. <laughs> right. And splatter- Maybe that was the conspiracy. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Or maybe escaping from the back of the bus is just instigating the cool kids to escape yeah, out the back true. of the bus. Yeah, that's true. They'll jump out and they'll close the door behind them. <laughs> Right, and right, and be run over by the vehicles following the bus. <laughs> hey, no end of conspiracy theories. I mean, and we don't need Badandi for conspiracy <laughs> theories around here. We can do pretty good. Now, I do have to give Mr. Badandi credit because he was in studio with me not this past week and the weekend before. And uh, as we were talking about his appearance, I jokingly said, bring us some pizzas. What does he do? He brought us some pizzas. Now, that's the kind of conspiracy theorist... The only problem is, did he have any um, conspiracy ideas about what was in the pizza? Well, yeah, it was probably some chemtrails on them or uh, right, the, right, genetically the, modified foods. One of them was a hot wiener pizza, which genetically modified me about a half hour later. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, you know, like, now, you know, we're having a little laugh at Badandi's expense, but I enjoy his show. And he's very good at what he does on the air. And the other thing is that what he calls and other conspiracy theorists call conspiracies, my only disagreement with them is, to me, by definition, isn't a conspiracy something that takes place behind closed doors in the darkness in secret, right? There's enough deranged stuff. (laughs) I think I said this to Badandi once when we were having a discussion you don't need conspiracies. Yeah. It's being done right in front of you. I mean, after 9-11, they made up something, and I'm sure they did it over a case of Budweiser. <laughs> Homeland Security. <laughs> <laughs> they, and they trumpeted the fact yeah. they, that the United States was now going to have something called Homeland Security. And I think it was only a last-minute change that prevented them from calling it the Fatherland Security. <laughs> And you know that um, George W. Bush at the time said, you know, I don't think anybody's really going to go for this. And then that guy, what's his name? Um, one of his, you know, Ro- Kyle Rove or whoever it was said, you know what? I'll bet you five drinks <laughs> that, you know, we can call this thing Homeland Security and the American people will only applaud. And the only thing worse than Homeland Security is the TSA. Now, I went to Orlando, Florida over the summer and... I took a train to Orlando, Florida, and that was because of a little thing called the TSA. Yeah, no, I haven't. I'll tell you, I flew once since 9-11, and it, was, it, it so much took the fun out of flying. You know, it's... Actually, speaking of my nasty Fred Flintstone feet, I flew to Chicago not too long after this sh- idiot shoe bomber was on a plane. He's trying to light his shoes on fire. He had some, I remember some, that. Yep, yep. some uh, firecrackers in there or something. So we all had to take off our shoes. So these poor TSA agents, as you were just talking about, I mean, <laughs> they must have seen some nasty, funky, corned up feet when everybody <laughs> had to take their shoes off. Total stinky action. <laughs> <laughs> but there's the conspiracy theory. Maybe the head of the uh, TSA has a wicked foot fetish and he's watching the cameras the whole time. Well, I'm just waiting for the day when a terrorist, a female terrorist, hides an explosive in her bra. That's when I sign up for a job with the TSA. That's when we'll all be down there. (laughs) Now, by the same token, I mean, I came up with this thought one day and, you know, I came up with the idea for, uh, by the way, everything we say on this show is for entertainment purposes only, but I came up with this idea for uh, one of my uh, short fictions. Uh, about a terrorist putting an explosive up his butt. <laughs> and I called it the ass blaster. <laughs> now, first of all, I'm just surprised that nobody's done that yet. Yeah, no, it's, 
I mean, that's how drugs have been smuggled for years yeah, and years. I mean, yeah, the only thing that protects us from more terrorism is that terrorists are very unimaginative and stupid. Yeah. 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 But actually, I mean, yeah, maybe I'll be quiet right you know, at this point because I'm full of such ideas. If you want to get those 72 versions, you better bend over. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Don't worry about turning your head and coughing. <laughs> <laughs> but now, what would Homeland Security do in the wake of an ass blaster explosive? <laughs> I mean, proctological exams... In the security line, um, I don't know. My yeah. mind is – actually, my mind reels at some of the implications of it. But um, actually, it would probably be very biased. You know, the more attractive the uh, individual, the more likely they ought to be taken aside <laughs> behind that curtain and yeah. told to bend over. You show up eating a seven-layer burrito and, uh, you know, a large iced coffee, and chances are they're going to wave you right through. <laughs> <laughs> uh, another terrorist stratagem. <laughs> My goodness. Okay, we're going to stop right there. We don't want to encourage any of our brothers in explosives. Uh, let's go. All right, let's go back to the music now. Let's see. We got Lady Evil for Hillary. You know what? Let's just keep this a politician. Uh, what would you say? A politician. Uh, Is this next one going to be for all of Bill's mistresses over the years? Which, according to the conspiracy theorists, it's, it's still going on. Yeah, well, I'm thinking... Uh, yeah, the song is Alice Cooper's Lace and Whiskey. So I'm thinking Lace for Bill and his mistresses, and then Whiskey for George W. So we'll do a twofer with this one. Lace and Whiskey by Alice Cooper here on the Haunted Cabaret on Rhode Island Free Radio. I'm a 
Koopa Lace and Whiskey, and then we had Madonna of the Wasps, which in keeping with our political theme, I guess, I don't know, maybe Sarah Palin. <laughs> I can't think of anybody more wasp. I mean, obviously, that's not the theme of the song, but, you know, just taking a word out of context, it's a political season. It could be either of the two running mates on either side of the two major parties, too. I mean, where do they find these dudes? Yeah, isn't Hillary's running mate, first of all, his name is Kane. <laughs> <laughs> oh my undertaker now yeah that's the only cane you know that and that cane is thinking about running for uh congress you're kidding me that cane also uh rhino of ecw fame now on wwe smackdown he actually won his primary for a, a state rep seat and uh he'll be he'll be on the ballot in november also now that i mean could you just picture rhino as your state senator, that'd be awesome. It would. I might actually I mean, o- open the door when these idiots come knocking. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I know the word "charging" would be in his campaign <laughs> slogan. It has to be. <clears throat> yeah, but isn't there something about Hillary's running mate Kane that he sweats profusely or something, or he's moist? I've heard that about him. That you know, one of the talk show hosts was saying up close, he's very. If you shake his hand or you know look at him up close, he's very sweaty Damn. and moist. I was thinking maybe one, you know, like a Lovecraftian deep one or something like that. You know, just, you know, he immerses himself in water part all, of the time. All I can picture is, uh, is Howard Dean from his ill-fated run in 2014. Ah! Yeah, and Howard, I'll tell you, it's amazing how these people surface. Because Howard Dean did surface long enough to say that not only did he not regret that speech, but he actually listens to it from time to time. Yeah. Now, there is such a thing as masochism. Right. But I think he's trying to... You know, he's trying to rewrite history a little bit. I think he's trying. It's, it's not working. It's not going <laughs> to work. No, Howard Dean is a cockroach who has been squashed on the uh, political ash heap, and that's where he stays. And 2014 was you know, just around the time where the Internet was getting ex- as accessible to the point where that scream and that speech can live in infamy. Yeah, it was kind of like the scream of a chipmunk being run over in the road, basically. <laughs> that's, that's what it amounts to. You don't scream unless you have some testicular fortitude <laughs> behind you. I mean, that's, I think that should be the law of yeah. politics or athletics. Yeah, basically. That's what, it, it always disturbed me when it's not exactly screaming, but the noises the female tennis players make. Yeah. That's, I think that turns some dudes on. I think so. <laughs> well, actually, I know so <laughs> because I can't remember, but there was one of them. Every time she hit the tennis ball, she had grunt, and it sounded just like, girls do when they take it in the butt even some of the female wrestlers they're they're guilty of the same thing well yeah i, I don't know what they're taking in the butt but. <laughs> well it's not pat patterson that's for sure <laughs> that's how everybody else got their contracts <laughs> i know I don't, I don't know who would be the uh, female equivalent of i don't know well i guess up until recently it could have been china 
China or um, I don't know uh, which way does uh, Stephanie McMahon go? I mean, because she can't yeah. be getting anything from Triple H after all those steroids. Triple H, is, <laughs> the man's penis has to be a half an inch long, right? I mean, don't steroids shrink the genitals? I mean, yeah. So oh, maybe Stephanie goes the other way around. <laughs> I mean, I know, and she's not getting it from Daddy because his penis is probably even shorter than Triple H's after all the. Uh, I don't know. Well, you know, steroids the, is probably the least of what he takes. The rumor is that before Stephanie McMahon, Stephanie McMahon was legal, she had a relationship with the Macho Man Randy Savage. So if, she's just she's just a steroid hound from way back. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you, yes, Pat Patterson. It's a shame too because he, if you ask me, like you know, who do I think the best pro wrestlers are? You know, and I gave you like a top ten as far as skill as far as mic skill as far as in-ring work skills i mean i think pat patterson was up there oh yeah yeah and you watch some of those old black and whites he kicked ass yeah and uh he had like a legendary series of matches uh back in the uh well just before the hulk hogan era with uh bob backland mm -hmm. yeah i think it was one of the let me now this is let me test my wrestling trivia and uh for wrestling nerds only i think that pat patterson versus bob backland was the only time in Madison Square Garden's main events that promoter Vince McMahon Sr. actually had the series of matches go to four wow. instead of three. Because, you know, it doesn't hold true now so much, but, you know, back in the legend days, even, you know, back up to the Hulk Hogan era, um, whenever you had a feud or a rivalry, mm -hmm. there would be two inconclusive matches and then that'd be the one blow off right. in a steel cage or a Texas yeah. death match or something like that. But apparently the Backlund Patterson matches went so well. And, you know, Vince McMahon senior in my, you know, everybody was enjoying it so much that he called them in before the third match. Yeah. And he said, this isn't the blow off. Keep it going. Keep it going. Right. So the fourth match was the blow off. And like I said, I don't think that's ever been done in pro wrestling history. That's awesome. Yeah. You know, the only problem is now that if I speak well of Pat Patterson, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, yeah. just, I just get the um, predictable remarks. It's, it's, it's too bad. You know, just, you know, you know, just like if you compliment O.J. Simpson's football playing, it's, right. you know, it's, yeah. Oh, well. Do you think any, there's any truth to the rumor that that's how you got your wrestling contract in the, in the 80s? Was that you spent some quality time with Pat Patterson, or you think that's just, just an urban legend? Uh, knowing nothing about the backroom dealings back then. <laughs> no, I mean, up until recently, I mean, as, as a kid growing up, I actually made it a practice not to know too much about, you know, the, the backstage yeah. aspect of the wrestling because I – Want, in other words, I wanted to be surprised by the angles. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I didn't want to know. Just like um, nowadays, if a new movie comes out, yeah. you can learn the whole plot. Spoilers. Yeah. I mean, I have to almost try to make myself deaf, dumb, and blind if I actually want to <laughs> enjoy a movie. I don't want to know ahead of time. Yeah. But as far as the Pat Patterson thing, um, I mean, he is gay, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a given. I would say my intuition tells me Probably when he saw a really hot number, he probably threw his authority around <laughs> a little bit. You know, I don't think he was the ultra predator, you know, the right, yeah. that you know, they make it out to be. And I also think that there was probably more than a few wrestlers who kind of made themselves available to Pat Patterson <laughs> because they wanted a contract. Well, you know, it's interesting to think that to this day, pro wrestling is almost – completely unregulated i mean at one point they were handing out steroids and you had the rumors with the pat patterson thing then they've had all kind of issues with the contracts and those guys right. are independent contractors that's the one that i can't get over i mean how can there's basically one big organization yeah and two little ones how can, and one of those little ones is up for sale uh which one now uh ring of honor yes uh tna for tna is uh, for sale? A pure uh i believe it's 40 million dollars it's up for sale right now as of this morning? Uh-huh. Well, they have some good talent there. I mean, they, of course, it's just like any other Eric Bischoff, Hulk Hogan-run wrestling organization. Right. I mean, yeah, they don't put over the new talent. 
So basically, you got the old guys just standing in the way. <laughs> Literally yeah. just standing around. <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah. I mean, when, you know, I haven't watched it in a while, but when you make Bubba Ray Dudley the champion. Yeah. I mean, you have some serious problems and he with had credibility. That, he had that angle where he made out with Hulk Hogan's daughter. You know, I mean, the you know, 30, 40 year age difference. That's a little weird. Yeah, it is. I mean, I actually had hopes for that, though, because they had, let's see, Austin Aries, I thought was really good. Um, then there was uh, Bobby Roode. Yeah. Who, if, see, now, if this had been the old days, back in the Legends Day, Bobby Roode, once they gave him the belt, they should have let him hold that belt for a couple of years. Yeah. If they had done that, they could have built up like a first class talent. But, like, you know, I can imagine who, you know, put the kibosh on that. So, yeah, I wouldn't pay $40 million for $40 it. million dollars for TNA, and WWE has said that if nobody else wants it, then they'll go ahead and buy it up. Which will probably be for about twenty million 20 or fifteen million. million, you know. Right. Right, because it's not is it financially insolvent or they just want to cash out when the cashing out's potly good. You know, they don't spend a ton of time on the road. They it seems like they run a pretty lean uh setup down there in Florida. So I think it's probably you know, it's not I would assume it's not making anybody rich, but it's probably not uh it's probably not in the red. Right. All right, so then, right, then if nobody else wants it, Vince will, like, you, yeah, probably. Yeah, Vince and the, they have. Their, their talent is allowed to work independence on the side, too. So, you know, those guys are probably happy. And Right. Yeah, so why are they putting it up to sale? I don't know. It doesn't really say in the article. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe it's just a case of wanting to cash out when the cash out yeah. is good. Yeah. Okay, well, be that as it may, um, what was the whole point of, where were we going with this? <laughs> That's why you'll never know what you're going to hear here on Rhode Island Free Radio because our Sometimes. our our, uh, our hosts have, you know, usually the hosts have one spit. This guy talks about politics. This guy talks about sports. This guy talks about sci-fi. Not here. We are all uh, jacks of all trades almost. Yeah, actually, I think I've gone in this one episode, I think I've gone from we, we Trump and Hillary. To terrorist butts. To right? Pat Patterson. To my funky feet. Yep, yep, yep. Can't forget that. <laughs> to Dan Padani's conspiracy theory, but the quality pizza he brings into the studio. Right. And then on to... The business what? dealings of TNA. Right. But before that, professional wrestlers running... Ah, that's how we... That's where we got here from. Professional wrestlers running for office. Oh, yeah, yep. That's what it was. Okay, that was the thread that tied all this absurdity together. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but yeah, I mean, when we say the home of all things horror here on the Haunted Cabaret, we mean it. Whether it's, you know, Ass Blaster Terrorists, whether it's Pat Patterson, whether it's... <laughs> whether it's Ass Blaster Pat Patterson. <laughs> <laughs> we're not kidding. Right, uh, let's get... Yeah, Tony. Yeah, we're probably running down yeah, toward the end are, here. Uh, we have enough time for the, the last track or the next track. All right, yeah. Track. Let's go with... Uh, now, this is uh, Sepultura's Nomad. Um, any political uh, figure in mind to around uh, this political... Uh, ep- and this is as much of a political episode as you're ever going to hear, by the <laughs> way. This silliness. Um, nomad. Uh, well, I mean, I think if society crumbles, uh, you're going to have nomads. I mean, the reason people stay... You know, I stay in Rhode Island because my folks are a little bit older and I have uh, you know a nice life here. But if it wasn't for that, if society crumbled... I'd probably go wandering around, and I think we're all kind of like that. Absolutely. Um, actually, I don't know. Maybe we could probably say Donald Trump again because he kind of wanders from party to party, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's he's wandered from uh, left wing liberal to uh, he was conservative a dem- Christian conservative and de- Democrat. Uh, well, now, six weeks. A lot of people don't remember. Also, in two thousand, uh, Donald Trump was running for president with the Reform Party, and Pat Buchanan beat him out. So. Think about that for a minute. <laughs> yeah, I'd rather not think about that for any length of time at all. All right, but yeah, let's go with the uh, yeah, Sepultura Nomad here on the Haunted Cabaret, Rhode Island Free Radio. <laughs>
Sepultura with Nomad and that Nomad I hate to bring up Star Trek but isn't that a, the title of a famous Star Trek episode of uh, Nomad Sterilize I think yeah I think it is Nomad just I don't know just again just something out of you know the cobwebbed corner of my brain just you know suggested by that song and not Tony we're almost out of here aren't we yeah that's about it Ooh, Do, that means we don't have time for goat whore? Well, I mean, this is the Haunted Cabaret, and along with Blue Oyster Cult, I think we always have time for goat whore. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just hope. All right, so, yep, I guess that's it for this week. Again, we've run into Twilight Zone time, and we are out of time. See you next episode. In the meantime, this is Goat Whore, when steel and bone meet on the Haunted Cabaret, Rhode Island Free Radio. Nighty night. Burning the